Hello, women made in the image of God. Today we're back with another Bible in a Year video, and we get to read Job 10 through 12, and we get to read Acts 4 through 25. So let's pray and read the word. Dear Heavenly Father, precious Holy God, holy, holy, holy. Um, there's literally, literally nobody like you. Um, there's none holy like the Lord, like you, Lord. Um, you don't lie. You don't shift. You don't change. You don't make promises and not keep them. You're you're not fickle like us. Your love is not fickle like ours. You are eternal and uh, everlasting. You are the everlasting God. Uh, you are the good shepherd. Jesus, you're the one. You're the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. Um. God, you sent your one and only begotten son so that so that we could be forgiven and adopted blood-bought children of God. Forgiveness for our hardness to your truths at times. Please soften our hearts to hear you today. We need you. Like Job needed you, we need you. Like Paul, the apostle, needed you, we need you. We need you. We just pray that your precious Holy Spirit would guide us through the text today, that we would learn your truth. Please help us to examine our hearts in light of your word. Grow us closer to you, Lord. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so open up your Bible to Job chapter 10, and let's read Job chapter 10. Job 10. I loathe my life. I will give free utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, give utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. Does it seem good to you to oppress, to despise the work of your hands and favor the designs of the wicked? Have you eyes of flesh? Do you see as man sees? Are your days as the days of man, or your years as a man's years, that you seek out my iniquity and search for my sin, although you know that I am not guilty, and there is none to deliver out of your hand? Your hands fashioned and made me, and now you have destroyed me altogether. Remember that you have made me like clay, and will you return me to the dust? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? You clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love, and your care has preserved my spirit. Yet these things you hid in your heart. I know that this was your purpose. If I sin, you watch me and do not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am guilty, woe to me. If I am in the right, I cannot lift up my head, for I am filled with disgrace and look on my affliction. And were my head lifted up, you would hunt me like a lion and again work wonders against me. You renew your witnesses against me and increase your vexation toward me. You bring fresh troops against me. Why did you bring me out from the womb? Would that I had died before any eye had seen me and were as though I had not been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Then cease and leave me alone that I may find a little cheer before I go and I shall not return to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of gloom like thick darkness, like deep shadow without any order, where light is as thick darkness. If you're a first or second year med student taking anatomy and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed because of how much information... Job 11. Then Zophar the Naamathite answered and said, Should a multitude of words go unanswered and a man full of talk be judged right? Should your babble silence men, and when you mock, shall no one shame you? For you say, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in God's eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you, and that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For he is manifold in understanding. Know, then, that God exacts of you less than your guilt deserves. Can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? It is higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than Sheol. What can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he passes through and imprisons and summons the court, who can turn him back? For he knows worthless men. 
When he sees iniquity, will he not consider it? But a stupid man will get understanding when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. If you prepare your heart, you will stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity is in your hand, put it far away, and let not injustice dwell in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be secure and will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away, and your life will be brighter than the noonday. Its darkness will be like the morning, and you will feel secure because there is hope. You will look around and take your rest in security. You will lie down and none will make you afraid. Many will court your favor, but the eyes of the wicked will fail. All way of escape will be lost to them, and their hope is to breathe their last. Job 12 Then Job answered and said, No doubt you are the people, and wisdom will die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things as these? I am a laughingstock to my friends. I, who called to God and he answered me, a just and blameless man, am a laughingstock. In the thought of one who is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers are at peace, and those who provoke God are secure who bring their God in their hand. But ask the beasts, and they will teach you, the birds of the heavens, and they will tell you, or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the palate tastes food? Wisdom is with the aged and understanding and length of days. With God are wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, none can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. With him are strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads counselors away stripped, and judges he makes fools. He looses the bonds of kings and binds a waistcloth on their hips. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows the mighty. He deprives of speech those who are trusted and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and loosens the belt of the strong. He uncovers the deeps out of darkness and brings deep darkness to light. He makes nations great and he destroys them. He enlarges nations and leads them away. He takes away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a pathless waste. They grope in the dark without light, and he makes them stagger like a drunken man. Job 13 Behold, my eye has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. But I Reformation Study Bible Notes R.C. Sproul Job 10.12 Chapter 10 10, 1, 17, since there is no one else to do it, Job sets out his case against God. He does not claim to be sinless, but according to the terms of the simplistic retribution theology to which he subscribes, he does want to prove that he has done nothing to deserve his suffering. Yet while Job is driven to voice severe complaints against God, he does not curse or abandon him. 10. I loathe my life. Job expresses wearied frustration with his life of suffering. See 716, 921. Not only is Job willing to die, he is seeking death as his only means of escape. 689. Nothing worse can happen, so he will complain freely and bitterly. C320. 10. Let me know why you contend against me. He speaks on the assumption that the traditional view of suffering held by the counselors is correct. He has not been able to deliver himself from this view. Therefore, he has wrongly concluded that God is angry with him, but has refused to specify the grounds for his treatment of Job. 10.3 Does it seem good to you? Lit. Is it good? A better translation may be, is it right? Favor the designs of the wicked. C. No wonder God will later accuse Job of discrediting his justice. 48. 1047 here is irony. Job knows God is omniscient and does not have to search out sins as a human prosecutor does. God knows Job is innocent, yet he has made Job his helpless victim. Job accuses God of hounding him and acting like a bully. 10812 Like the author of P.S. 91316, Job understands that God fashioned him in the womb, gave him life and blessed him. In another context, V.V. 11.12 would constitute grounds for praise, but here Job cannot understand how God can treat him so badly. Job is leveling a charge of inconsistency against God. 10.13 these things. Job seems to say that his plight is a divine punishment planned from the beginning of his life. He does not understand that God's plan in his suffering is something other than punishment. 10.14.15 all this is predicated on the mistaken assumption that his ordeal is due to God's punitive wrath. In Job's mind, nothing he does can relieve him of God's unremitting hostility toward him. 10.16 Were my head lifted up, though my head is not expressed in the text. Text note. It is readily supplied. The thought is either of Job's getting up off the ground, or his achieving some measure of success in prosecuting his case against God. Three metaphors are used to show God's reaction were that to happen. 1. He would renew his attacks on Job like a lion. 2. 
he would provide additional witnesses against him in court, V-17. And three, he would resume his attacks on job with fresh troops, V-17. One eighteen twenty two job again wishes he had never been born, C-310. His unremitting pain has rendered his life worthless. His tone is no longer the patient resignation of 121, but of embittered protest at the treatment he has received at the hand of God. 1021 before I go. Return. Notice the difference between jobs present description of that place as a land of darkness, using four nouns of similar meaning to intensify the picture. While in 31319, he looked on it as being a place of peace and rest. This proves that Job's emotional raging must not be used as a basis for constructing normative OT or Christian theology. The rule of interpretation to be observed is that when Job or the counselors are in agreement with the testimony of the rest of Scripture, their statements may be accepted. But in the dramatic flow of the book, neither he nor they can be relied on as a sure source of theological formulations and their correct applications. All of them say much that is correct, but they apply it wrongly to the situation at hand. Chapter 11 11 120. Zophar, the most severe of Job's counselors, now speaks his mind on Job's plight and bluntly presents recommendations based on the assumptions that Job has spoken presumptuously regarding his character, v4, and that he is willfully concealing his wrongdoing and refraining from confessing serious sin. Zophar speaks in a cold, rationalistic fashion, seemingly more concerned with putting Job in his place than extending him any comfort. 11. 1. The Namathite. Possibly from Arabia, not from the Nama mentioned in Josh. 1541, which was in the western foothills of Judah. 1126. Zophar is indignant with Job and mocks him because he has said much without true substance. 11. I am clean in God's eyes. Not an exact quotation of Job, who has not said he was sinless. C721 1326. He has claimed not to have led the kind of sinful life that might deserve such severe suffering, but he has also admitted that no mortal can be righteous before God. 92. 116. Manifold in understanding. The image is of something folded double so that its full extent is not immediately revealed. God's wisdom is far greater than Job supposes. If God were to expose all of Job's sin, it would be far greater than Job imagines. Far from a divine audience leading to Job's vindication, it would leave him liable to greater punishment. Less than your guilt deserves. The words reflect Zophar's supposition of the enormity of Job's sin. 11 7 12 Zophar picks up on Job's reference to God's wisdom, 9 4, and argues that Job cannot fathom the wisdom of God, who is inaccessible and inscrutable. Verses 7-9 are an eloquent expression of the transcendence of God, which so far then misapplies. Job therefore cannot successfully oppose God in court. Ironically, Zophar has no doubts about his own perception of God. It is this misperception that is corrected in the epilogue. 42-7-9 11, 11 12 God is capable of assessing who is worthless, a term implying deceitful behavior. A stupid man is empty-headed and without spiritual capacity. It would take a miracle to make him see sense. Zophar speaks in general terms, but he is clearly taking aim at Job. 11 13 20 While this is good advice for a profligate sinner, it does not properly apply to Job. Like Bildad, Zophar makes no allowance for mercy. Instead he argues that Job has to become righteous before God will accept him and give him the benefits of restoration. 11 14 15 Zophar is arrogant to think he knows why Job is suffering. We know from the prologue that it is not because Job sinned. Job was called by God to join that grand company of innocent sufferers for the glory of the Lord. 1120 Zophar contrasts the end of the wicked to the blessedness of the righteous. BV 1519. He implies that if Job persists in his current attitude, he can expect to share the fate of the wicked. Chapter 12. Job's 1422, Job's long speech, starts with a blast of sarcasm against his counselors, which continues to 1319. Beginning in 1320, Job turns to God, creating a major break in the speech. Job's inclination to talk to God, to pray, stands in notable contrast to the counselors, who never say a word to God but only talk about him. 12 to you. The forms in VV. 2, 3 are plural. Job replies caustically to the insinuations of his friends. They think they know everything, but he is their equal. 12, 4. 6. Job agonizes over being made a laughingstock, even to his friends. He remembers times of familiarity with God and contrasts them with what has come upon him while evildoers and idolaters live in ease and security. Job claims that divine administration of justice is awry. 12, 6. Their God in their hand. The translation is uncertain, but the thought seems to be that they can easily control and manipulate the gods they worship. 12.7.8 U. The forms in these verses are now singular, probably referring to Zophar alone. Ask the beasts. The earth. Like Eliphaz, who called upon revelation to support his arguments, and Bildad, who called upon tradition. Job calls on every creature in the universe to bear witness to his argument that the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer. 12.9. The hand of the Lord. Only here in the poetic discourses is Yahweh, the covenant name of God, used. While some take this as evidence of a later insertion into the text, its rare occurrence points to its significance. 
God is acting even in these circumstances with personal care and attention. Its use is not anachronistic, though its full significance has not yet been revealed. Job uses the name in 121, where he also acknowledges that calamities come from the Lord. 12.12 12 can also be translated as a question. Shouldn't wisdom be found among the aged? The verse is ironic and aimed at the counselors, who are old but have not become wise. 12.13.25 in this unit of poetry, Job expounds the doctrine of God's sovereign freedom. Some have interpreted this as subtle criticism of God for mismanaging the universe. According to that view, God is limited and needs to be forgiven by his creatures. But throughout this book, even when Job is raging over his suffering and suggesting doubts about God's justice, he always takes for granted that God is sovereign and that man can make no effective objection to what he does. Job wrestles with a mystery, one too deep for his shallow counselors. This part of the speech may be provoked by Zophar's question in 11. Per 7. Can you find out the deep things of God? The poem may also be a reply to Eliphaz's hymn in 5126, where only good things happen to good people. Such an idea is refuted in this stanza. 1224, 25 Job's understanding of how God can reverse the circumstances of the wise and powerful is implicitly turned on his friends. Though they are old and considered to be wise, God has left them in the dark when it comes to considering what has overwhelmed Job. Acts 8, 4, 25. 8, 4 scattered. Preaching the word. Since the apostles have remained in Jerusalem, 1. Those who now herald the good news, the Greek verb behind preaching here, are other believers, not Jesus' specially designated witnesses to his resurrection, 122. Philip, whose office focuses on mercy ministry to widows, 626, is one example. Through persecution the message is spread farther and more rapidly, 1119. As the church father Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, 85 Samaria. Samaritans, thought to be descended from intermarriage between Israel's northern tribes and pagan peoples relocated by Assyria, revered the five books of Moses but not the rest of the OT scriptures. And they combined devotion to idols with formalistic service to the Lord, two kin, 1724-41. Relationships between Jews and Samaritans were strained at best and hostile at worst. John 4.9. Jesus reached out to Samaritans in grace, even as he categorized them as outside the covenant people. 4.22. Luke 17.16-17. By preaching Jesus as the Christ to Samaritans, Philip carries the gospel not only across geographical boundaries, but also across a vast religious and racial divide. 8.9. Simon. Simon Magus the sorcerer is frequently mentioned in ancient writings outside the Bible as an archenemy of the church and one of the leaders of the Gnostic heresy. Gnosticism, named from the Greek word Job wrestles with a mystery, one too deep for his shallow counselors. This part of the speech may be provoked by Zophar's question in 11. Per 7. Can you find out the deep things of God? The poem may also be a reply to Zophar's hymn in 5126, where only good things happen to good people. Such an idea is refuted in this stanza. 1224, 25 Job's understanding of how God can reverse the circumstances of the wise and powerful is implicitly turned on his friends. Though they are old and considered to be wise, God has left them in the dark when it comes to considering what has overwhelmed Job. Acts 8 4. Again, sorry that uh, <laughs> it mispronounces Job's name. Uh, but yeah, uh, those are really helpful notes. Um, I, have, I have not, and I plan to, tentatively, I plan to not make comments on Job because I don't think I'm wise enough yet to understand. Um, so I'm really leaning on the, the Holy Spirit and on. Uh, God having guided R.C. Sproul, Brother R.C. Sproul, by his spirit, um, obviously anchoring everything back to the whole of scripture, uh, but I definitely think that uh, Sproul is wiser than me on these things. He was alive a lot longer than I was, um, so I have been, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, those are really helpful notes, and I think I'm really grateful that we have them, so keep meditating on the text and um yeah test everything by scripture but yeah those are helpful very helpful we we need we need god we need his wisdom um apart from him we have nothing so let's read acts chapter 8 so acts chapter 8 starting we're going to probably just start at the beginning uh but yeah 8 through verse 25 Acts 8. And Saul approved of his execution, 
And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him, because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized he continued with Philip, and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Now... Wow. Yeah, this is good. This is actually, um, I recently watched this video. It's a, not that. What does your video sound like? Go to artlist.io and get the best music and sound effects for your video. Not that. Um, John Piper. It's one of the most recent videos that Desiring God posts, so you should be able to find it. Yeah. Hmm. There it is. Um, I'll link this below. But this is helpful because I think, like, there's many groups that will read these times and acts, and they will interpret by experience rather than by the whole whole of scripture. Um about the Holy Spirit. So really beware of those kinds of groups. I would tell you more than anything, and maybe not more than anything, that's a little extreme, but um, I would tell you, I would urge you to steer very clear of the group that calls themselves apostolic, the apostolic church. I'm using quotation marks. First of all, there's no more apostles um, there was 12 apostles, and they had a, as we've learned about before, um, there are certain qualifications for someone um, to have been an apostle. Um, and so God, of course, God sends us out now, and uh, but it's not the, it's not the same as what an apostle is. So first of all, um, this is really, really important. It's okay if you disagree on, like, um, the gifts of the Spirit. Like, I could, I personally don't die on that hill. Uh, there were certain things within that that I will die on if people are doubting the testimony of Scripture because they, quote-unquote, received a vision that contradicts Scripture that uh, I would <laughs> greatly, <laughs> greatly, uh, greatly 
just warring off of that. I mean, in Galatians, it literally says Paul himself, in Galatians chapter 1, says, um, if I, even I, or, hold up, let me, let me actually read the verse. If the internet will cooperate with us here. Um, so, Paul the Apostle is writing to the Galatian church because there's some chaos going on over there. So, saying, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one preached to you, let him be accursed. He literally says, even if we, that's how strong this statement is. Um, so yeah, th this is really important. Um, so be beware specifically of those who call themselves apostolic because they will say to you things like, oh, if you don't have, if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, then you're not saved, which by, uh, let me tell you, that is nowhere in, in the New Testament. In fact, in First uh, Corinthians um, I believe it's 14. Uh, Paul says, let me just show you real quickly. Yeah, here you go. This right here. I think there's another one somewhere. Um, Yeah, he says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Um, yeah, exactly. And at the beginning of this chapter, he says, he says, desire the gifts, especially that you may prophesy for one who speaks in a tongue. This is my tongue to God and, and that. And on the other hand, the one who prophesies. So he's making distinctions between the different gifts. Um and he says, now, I want all of you to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. He's talking about a difference between um, different gifts. Not everyone has the same gift. Um, and again, it's very debatable what this whole gifts of, of tongues is. Um, I believe that if you look at... Uh, Acts chapter two, you see that the gifts, uh, the 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 tongues is literally different languages. It's not this like random, angelic quote unquote language where people will take First Corinthians thirteen and be like, "Well, it's just tons of angels," but it's just a hyperbole that's being used there to for exaggeration. Is what my belief is. However, I am more than willing to disagree with a extremely godly brother or sister who holds tight to scripture, that believes in the sufficiency of scripture, that believes in um, just <laughs> all the really, really main important doctrines, but they disagree with me on that specific issue. Um, I'm okay with with agreeing to disagree with a true brother or sister in Christ. What I'm not what I'm not okay with agreeing on is if someone tells me that if I don't do this this uh, if I don't force myself to pretend to do this uh, thing, then I'm not saved. And so that's where you get a bunch of people in these different churches where it's like they think that they're saved, but you know. A week later, they apostatized because they were just they were just pretending because it's almost like a fear based like you have to pretend to speak in tongues or else you're not saved and everyone will think you're not saved. It's like that's so wrong and that's so opposite to what scripture talks about uh, in terms of the assurance of, of, you know, test yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Nowhere is it said, oh, yeah. And if you don't do this, then you're not. No, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. It, there's nothing on assurance with that. That's just a, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Anyways, I'm trying to go it off and I'm sorry, but I encourage you to read Galatians 1, 1 Corinthians um, 14, uh, Acts 2. Again, um, I will drop this and uh, this in the uh, thing below if that is, I think it's, it's really important in our day and age.
Um, so uh, I'll drop that there for your reflection. Feel free to watch it on 2x speed or whatever x speed you want to watch it on. Um, but yeah, so that being said, um, praise God for the gift of his precious Holy Spirit because we we need we need him so desperately. Um, and um, praise God for how he saves people. It's truly amazing. So um, let's read the notes. I will actually just watch the summary with you really quickly here. So, Lord, anymore, you are my Lord. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of Christ. If you are a Christian, you have the Spirit of God. Or here's another evidence. And that, that's important because you see that um, the reason why this man does not have the Holy Spirit is because he's he's not right with his heart is not right before God yet but they encourage him you know repent therefore of this wickedness of yours and pray to the lord that if possible the intent of your heart may be forgiven you um and then and then in, in that which if he was to become a true christian then he would have the gift of the holy spirit so um yeah that's important so we'll get to read more tomorrow so let's read the notes or 25 8 4 scattered preaching the word since the apostles have remained jerusalem 8 4 scattered preaching the word. Since the apostles have remained in Jerusalem, 1. Those who now herald the good news, the Greek verb behind preaching here, are other believers, not Jesus' specially designated witnesses to his resurrection, 122. Philip, whose office focuses on mercy ministry to widows, 626, is one example. Through persecution the message is spread farther and more rapidly, 1119. As the church father Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, 85 Samaria. Samaritans, thought to be descended from intermarriage between Israel's northern tribes and pagan peoples relocated by Assyria, revered the five books of Moses but not the rest of the OT scriptures. And they combined devotion to idols with formalistic service to the Lord, two kin. 1724-41. Relationships between Jews and Samaritans were strained at best and hostile at worst, John 4-9. Jesus reached out to Samaritans in grace, even as he categorized them as outside the covenant people, 422, Luke 17-16-17. By preaching Jesus as the Christ to Samaritans, Philip carries the gospel not only across geographical boundaries, but also across a vast religious and racial divide. 8-9 Simon Simon Magus the sorcerer is frequently mentioned in ancient writings outside the Bible as an archenemy of the church and one of the leaders of the Gnostic heresy. Gnosticism, named from the Greek word genesis, meaning knowledge, taught that a person gains salvation not by the merit of Christ's death for sinners, but by special knowledge about God. Justin Martyr D.A.D. 165, says that almost all the Samaritans considered Simon the highest god, the power of God that is called Great, V10, resembling the title of a later Gnostic text. Irenaeus, D.A.D. 180, who wrote extensively against the Gnostics, regarded Simon as one of the sources of their heresies. Although the Simon of V9 could be another Simon, the Church Fathers equate the two, and the context of 8. 911 his character and the Samaritans' attitude about him, permits but does not require the identification of the two as the same person. Expansion of the early church in Palestine. 813 Even Simon himself believed. Since Peter later states that Simon's heart is not right before God, and that he remains in the bond of iniquity. Mv. 2123. It becomes clear that Simon's profession of faith prior to baptism was not sincere. Luke describes Simon's response as it first appeared to Philip and his fellow Samaritans, allowing the unfolding story to disclose the true condition of the magician's heart. 81517 Received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. The believing Samaritans to this point have not received observable evidence of the Holy Spirit's gifts for ministry, v. 16. Although as believers the Holy Spirit is living in them, Rom. 8, 9, 1, 8 note, 238 note. It appears that the Spirit waits to impart his extraordinary gift so that apostles can observe and testify to the truth of the report that Samaria had received the word of God, v. 14. Which is the second geographical area to which Acts 1 h says the witness of the Spirit will extend, cf. 144, 46. 11, 1, 12, 15. This is a repeated Pentecost experience. We are not told what evidence the Holy Spirit gives of his empowering of Samaritan believers, but he manifested his arrival in some way that Simon can see and or hear. B. 18. 18, 19 offered them money, saying, Give me this power. Despite his profession of faith, Simon still views supernatural power as a commodity to be purchased and controlled, and is blind to the utter graciousness of God's gift. Is 20. 8, 22, 23 by his words and actions. 
Simon proves that he does not believe in Christ. V13 note. He is still poisoned by bitterness. CF. Dute. 918. AB. 1215. And in the bond of iniquity. See Rom. 61688. A profession of faith without repentance is invalid. 824 Luke does not clarify whether Simon's plea for Peter's intercession is a symptom of real repentance at last, as Peter commanded. V22. Or merely an expression of terror in the face of power superior to his own. Peter has instructed Simon to pray to the Lord for forgiveness, but Luke does not record whether Simon ever does so. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, we need Christ. Those were also helpful notes. Um, it appears that the Spirit waits to impart his extraordinary gifts so that the apostles can observe and testify to the truth of the report that Samaria had received the word of God, which is the second geographical area to which Acts 1 8 says the witness of the Spirit will extend. Yeah. It also makes me think of um uh to the ends of the earth Bible. Yeah, Acts one eight. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Yeah. So here here the scripture is being fulfilled right in front of their eyes. Beautiful. Mm hmm And all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. It just goes to show how God always intended to save his people from every tribe, every nation, every tongue. Um, yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's good. So, with that being said, um, I encourage you to continue to read through and meditate on what we read. Um, you know, yeah, come to God not for things or an experience. Come to God for God. Um, because. Yeah, God is is worth that. He's not there to feed your greed. He's there to um save you from your sins and become your very life. Not not you can't serve God and money. You either serve him or you serve yourself. So repent and come back to the Lord. Um But yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that um, in Christ you offer us forgiveness, um, that you you know all those that you died for, all those that will come to you in repentance and faith, um, that you predestined us for adoption as sons, that you um, open our eyes and and to the to the beauty of who you are and to the disgustingness of sin that we that we would come to you, Lord, that we would realize our need for you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray that you would do that in more, more people's lives, Lord. We thank you that your gospel is the power of you, God, for salvation to all who believe, Lord. Um, that uh, you, we just need to share your gospel and you will draw your people to yourself, Lord. You will do what you will do. Um, so help us to plant seeds, water seeds, um, and uh, just to be bold with your gospel, Lord. Um, yeah, to uh, see people as image bearers in need of a savior, to see every person we meet as a potential future brother or sister in Christ, because we don't know who could be, who who it could be, Lord. Um, for all we know, we could pass by 
um, you know, a homeless person and and share the gospel with them. And who knows, that person could be our f- future brother or sister in Christ. Or maybe they're already our brother and sister in Christ. Who knows, God? Um, so give us boldness and, and uh, call us out of self-preservation and selfishness and, and call us to closer with you and help us to commune with you daily. Lord, we, we need you. Help us to desire you more than food and uh, to put you above food on this on our priority list because you are first regardless but we need to we need to treat you as such lord or else our lives will be in shambles and we need you god Um, so jesus would you help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and, and to not worry each day but to to uh just trust in you and to grow and trust in you to love you and um by knowing your love for us while we were yet sinners on the cross. Thank you that while we were yet sinners, you died for us, that greater love has no one than us that one laid down his life for his friends. Um, yeah, thanks for today, Lord. Help us to see your beauty and fix our eyes upon it and upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, grace and peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.